who the, who the host to this thing? <laughs> Tell they us got about me, they got blood, my blood ticking. That's what took me a long time to get here. Are you hey. Yeah, they always trying to date eight. Popped up eight times to test it. <laughs> Nine times. It's the eight times. How many, tests, how, many tests, how many tests you take for this camp? Because you, cause you know the rumors and stuff, so let's just this clear that eight, up now. This is eight. Eight? Yeah. You this had eight tests? Yes, they popped up eight times. Number eight. Good. Well, well, it's hot in Houston, it's hot in Dallas, it's hot in Texas, so uh, that's the best time we can get our best work. They can't handle the heat. Hey, great, great knockout, man. Was you trying to send a serious message to any of the 154 pounders out there? I mean, if they don't know me by now, they know that I do got some of the most power at the weight division from our, for our size. Um, and tonight was something that they could look at and be in and uh, and probably put a little fear in their heart. But uh, I definitely wanted to make a statement tonight. So so definitely wanted to get the knockout. This didn't know where round. I told all my partners to put ten thousand dollars on each round for the first five. Well, my brother, <laughs> he rich. <laughs> yes, whatever. Uh, Joey Spencer's fight. Give us your thoughts about his fight. Who? Joey Spencer. He's a young... It, I was getting ready for my fight. Um, I wasn't too much... For, I had my back turned towards the TV. Jamel, can you talk a little bit about uh, not only main eventing, but also... Uh, promoting this card, you had uh, Quentin Randall, yeah. you had Marquise Taylor on the card. Can you talk a little bit about that aspect and how you balanced that getting ready for this fight? Um, it was it it it, it, it wasn't it wasn't hard. Uh, Quentin Randall and uh, Quentin Randall, which is right here, still got his trunks on, and uh, Marquise Taylor. They was in both in camp with me, going back and forth to Houston and Dallas. Uh, you know, we all trained like like brothers, we're in together, we worked out together. It was great. It was a great time, um, and. You know, they knew that they was going to be on this card and they knew that they was getting ready for a, a, a tough fight. Each one of them had great opponents um, on paper. So, yeah, and, and Lions Only is not just stopping right now. We're going to continue to push Lions Only. We're going to continue to find fighters and sign fighters with the, with, with the ambition. You know, it's not about we want to build and, um, you know, maybe me and Earl Spence could team up together and grab a bunch of fighters from Texas and bring them out to, to Vegas and whoop on the Vegas squad or whatever, you know, we, we trying to do our Earl Spence, get his squad together, I get my squad together and we'd be businessmen and make something happen, but it's going to be fun. We trying to enjoy life and, um, and continue to do what we do, you know, as boxers and promoters. Uh, all right. Anybody got another one? Uh, my son. Daddy of the Beast, appreciate it. <laughs> there go my son right there. I told he, he told me he was like, man, Daddy, I'm just ready for you to get this over with, man. It's stressful. It's stressful. <laughs> yeah. It's stressful the whole fight week. You've been with me, so it's just been a great thing. I love you and you're a beast. Appreciate it, dog. Thank you so much. I did this fight for you. <laughs> about the, uh, the fight with uh, Tony Harrison and going, going from the first fight, going into the second fight. What do you find the adjustments you have to make? What are some of the things you got to look out for being in there with him? I just got to pick it up a little bit faster, uh, give it a little better tempo. Um, depending on how Tony Harrison want to take this fight or take the fight, I'm going for the, the, the knockout just like I just did right now. So regardless of, of what the case is, I'm looking to be smart in the ring, move my head, use my defense, and come, come for the knockout. He got to fight me next no matter what. We got an immediate rematch from the WBC because um, he know and the world know that he did not pull that fight off. Um, and, if, and, and honestly, listen, if you want to win a title in boxing, you got to take the title from the champion. Um, I don't know what those judges were scoring it as, but if they don't like the Charlo twins, that's just on them. We'll hire better judges next time. And um, I, I was strict about getting the title back. I think that's one of the main things that I focus on. And uh, obviously, I came here tonight to try to get my title back. I didn't get the chance to fight for the title, but I'm gonna get it back soon. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm, I'm glad that I was able to, you know, not just be sitting on the shelf waiting on somebody to come out of an injury. Now I know all y'all guys. Uh, probably follow me on Instagram, and y'all seen what I posted of about somebody complaining and you know saying they'll fake an injury, and then all of a sudden they come out with the same injury. So um, if you show me an ace, and I see an ace, that's an ace. You know what I'm saying? And so that's the, that's what we're rolling with. To me, I don't care if he uh, 
if, if, if he faked it or not, I'm ready to fight him whenever he's ready. Ain't no matter. Um, and everybody else in the division. So other than that, I'm, I'm appreciative of my twin brother for coming out. He fight this, he fight this Saturday, he fight Saturday. And um, y'all know I didn't have my brother when I lost my title in the corner and I just gotta have my brother every time. So I probably won't be fighting on the same one the court for a while. But, but uh, you know, they get show hella love and I love it. You know, they, they, they know what lines only is. Any questions? Spence. Hey, Jamel, congratulations on that amazing knockout, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you said you were going to make sure that you didn't lose your this fight because your son. And, yeah. and, and how does that make you feel now that you made that amazing knockout in front of your son? Well, I mean, that's just, I'll rate that as an A plus in front of my son. Um, if he's there or not, you know, just getting hit in front of him is different than him watching it on TV. Um, my focus was there. Like I said, tonight was important, you know, that I bounce back the way I bounce back and uh, deliver the statement that I made. All right, yeah, Jamel, so going with this opponent, he seemed to be a little bit awkward. What were some of the difficulties as far as adjusting to this cat? I mean, he had a wide stance, and he, he you know, he came out southpaw. He's an orthodox fighter, and so, um, you know, like I said, thanks to Earl Spence Jr., of all of the training that we put in for so for so long. Earl not in camp like right now, but he's training hard, but we didn't spar. But because of the, the past and previous um, sparring sessions that we didn't put in, um, it made it easy to adjust. Uh, prior, prior to uh, hearing that you were gonna fight this guy, did you know anything about him? And did you see any fight films on him? And did you study or have an opportunity to study any of his style of fighting? I mean, I only heard of the kid when he fought Lubin, um, cause they was, you know, supposed to, they was number one and two for my mandatory, to become mandatory. So when I fought Lubin, it was, that was about a few years ago. He's still in the game, he was getting better. And, um, you know, we only had the time to, to, to game plan was whenever he accepted the fight. And what point in the fight did you see that he was in trouble? Um. I, when I start stepping up and I start getting them going back, um, not a lot of Mexican fighters that come straight forward, and you know that's their game plan. Him switching up, um, and being a southpaw and shuffling backwards, he was open for like dominant punches, and that's kind of how they happen. Compare your knockout to Deontay Wilder's knockout tonight. What'd I don't you say? know. It's really, really <laughs> close. I, know we both, I, I seen I seen my opponent eyes roll back in his head, for sure. Can you go over the setup for this knockout? I mean, it was a clean setup from the first knockout and going into that second knockout. Very clean work, so I salute you about that, man. Appreciate it. I don't know. Um, I, I know I set him up just throw, I threw an overhand right. So trying to get into the exchange because I know that's what he really wanted. So from the first round to the to the third round, I knew I had to go in there and try to, like, you know, get him to mix it up so I could counter with the punches that I tried to counter with. Is this one of your, one of your most devastating knockouts to date? Nah, you seen it. You know I got some <laughs> knockouts. That's what I'm, I'm used to. I'm known for knocking them out, sleeping them. <laughs> it seemed like from the opening round, he was coming forward, and that right was there for you. Um, did you see it early? Um, I, th I, I did see it. I threw a double jab, and I knew I could have let a right hand go.